Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Today we look at investing in shares. So shares, we're talking about share in a company. So that sort of means that you are part owner of a company. So the more shares you have, the greater proportion of a company that you own. So people buy shares in companies, so they give the company money, so the company can use that to do things and make money. And then the aim is that those shares will increase in price over time. People might sell them and they'll get a profit, they'll make some money off it. Or they might keep their shares for a long time and each year or so they receive dividends which will go through. So it's a way for people to make money. They're basically giving a company money to make them more money. So we're just going to be looking at more of the maths behind it. So we're going to start by looking at an example. Okay, so we start with a simple example. So if James buys 900 shares in a company for $1.48 each, how much will this cost? So when we say the shares $1.48 each, that's the thing that's quoted and you can read them in the newspaper. So $1.48 is exactly what you'd see in the newspaper. And that is the last price that shares were selling for the day before. So generally, you know, if people think a company's going to do well and grow, they'll want to buy those shares. And if those shares are in demand, a lot of people want to buy shares in the company, the price will go up of those shares and sometimes share prices come down if you know the company's not doing so well so like today if a company came out and they said oh we didn't actually make much money last year their share prices would likely go down fewer people would want to invest in them but the maths behind this is very simple all we need to do is multiply 900 shares times a dollar 48 each simple as that Okay, it's just 1,332. So if James did this, he owns 900 shares in the company, so he's a part owner of the company. So he just has to pay 1,332 for the shares. But you can't just buy them. It needs to be done by a stockbroker, and the stockbroker charges like a commission, and that's called the brokerage. So calculating the brokerage isn't hard. Again, that's just what you would have to pay a stockbroker to buy those shares. So it's just a simple percent of a quantity. So we need to find 2.4% of 1,332. So you just go 2.4 over 100 times 1,332. And so that is $31.97. So he would have to pay the stockbroker $31.97 to buy those shares. So now we're going to look at dividends. Okay, so this question says, company 900,000 shares, they make a profit this year of 12.5 million. They pay dividends of 20% of their profit and we have to find the dividend per share. So dividends are exactly what it sounds like from that question. A company, when they make a profit, they'll take some of the profits, in this example, 21%, and they will divide those profits among shareholders. And they will give them a certain amount per share that that person owns. And of course, they want to do this because dividends make people want to invest in their company. The higher the dividend, the more attractive it is for people to invest. So how do we figure this out? Well, first off, we know that they're paying a dividend of 21% of their profit which is, and the profit's 12.5 million. So they will pay a total of 21% of 12.5 million. Okay, so let's just put this in our calculator. And we get 2.625 million, or 2,625,000. So that's how much they're going to pay in dividends. So what they do is they divide that equally for each share. So if there's 900,000 shares, we just divide that by 900,000. Okay, and we get 2.916 recurring. So I'm just going to round this to $2.92. So they give shareholders $2.92 for each share that they own. So how much would James receive? Well, that's pretty simple. He gets $2, like everybody at the company, he gets $2.92 per share. And as it said at the start, he, earns, he owns 900 shares. 
And so that equals 2,628. So he will get 2,628 pure profit. That's what he gets from the company after a year. And again, that's why people invest, so they can get dividends and make money. All right, so now we're going to look at the dividend yield. So please pause and copy this down if you need it. So this here is the formula for the dividend yield. So it's not too hard, it's just the dividend per share divided by the price per share times 100%. Now why people calculate the dividend yield is it gives them an indication of the percentage of what they invested they've earned. Did they earn, you know, 4% of what they originally invested this year? Did they earn 10% of what they invested? And what that does is you can compare it to investing in other ways. So we know that we could invest in a bank in a fixed term deposit. We could, you know, put $10,000 in a bank account and the bank will say, oh, we'll give you, you know, 4% interest. The dividend yield allows you to compare with that. If the dividend yield is more than 4%, that's a better option. But if it's lower than 4%, that's not a good option. So a dividend yield is usually something you would think about before you invest it. But we're going to look at an example of how to calculate it. So we'll look back at our previous example. Remember James bought 900 shares at $1.48 each and he received a dividend of $2.92 per share. Now that's actually extremely high because he received a dividend that was much more than the share price. Usually if you uh, invest at shares at $1.48, the dividend per share would be much lower than $1.48. But so his dividend yield, so I'm just going to call that DY for dividend yield. So his dividend per share divided by the price per share times 100%. So that equals crazy high 197%. And that makes sense because he's almost tripled. So in this, he had to start by investing about $1,300 and then he made more than double than that after he was given the dividend. So he made heaps of money. His dividend yield is 197% just short of 200%, which means he would have tripled his money. So is this better or worse than a bank that offers 20% interest? Yes, 197 is much, much greater than 20%. So therefore, it is much better that he invested in the share market that he did rather than investing in a bank because he earned much, much more interest. He earned much, much more money. And that's what this 197% means. He earned 197% of what he originally put in. All right, there's just one more example we need to do that's a little more complicated. Please pause and copy this down if you need. So the last thing we look at today is the P to E ratio, the price to earnings ratio. So the formula's up there in red and in blue it explains what it means. So the P to E just gives you one number, maybe 0 0.5, maybe 10, and that tells you how much an investor has to pay per share for each dollar the company is earning. So a P to E of 10 means that you have to pay $10 per share for every one dollar the company is earning. So if the company is earning $1, you pay $10 per share. If the company is earning $2, you're paying $20 per share. If the company is earning, let's say, $15 a year, then you're paying $150 per share. If the company is earning $1 million a year, you are paying $10 million per share, and, sh and so on. So a lower number is better. It sort of means the company is a bit more efficient. If they're needing, you know, $20 per share for from each shareholder, but they're only earning, you know, $1 for every $20 invested, it doesn't suggest great things about the business. However, it's best to compare the price to earnings ratio of companies in the same sort of market. So you might compare them with two companies in say technology that make computers or something rather than comparing the price to earnings ratio of one who makes cars and one who makes computers. You can still do that, but if they're in the same field, that makes the comparison a little better because you know in some companies people just have to spend lots and lots of money to make something whereas in other companies you don't have to spend as much to make things. So let's look at an example, and this is a complicated example, so I'm just doing it so you know how to do it. 
Okay, so let's look at this question. So a company market price of a share is $6.80 each. They give a dividend of 32 cents per share, which is 18% of their profit. And we want to find their price to earnings ratio. So what we need to do is we need to divide the market price per share by the annual earnings per share. So the market price per share, well, that's easy. That is just $6.80. So market price means what people are paying for it at the moment. So the bottom thing is the hard one to find. I have to find the annual earnings per share. Now, it doesn't tell me what the annual earnings are or how many shares there are. So we need a bit of ingenuity to figure this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to let X equal the annual earnings. And what we're going to do is let Y be the number of shares. So we need to know the annual earnings and number of shares to find the bottom part of this ratio. So what we want to find is the annual earnings per share. We want to find X over Y. So we know that the dividend 32, sorry, we know that 32% 0 0.32, 32 cents per share equals 18% of the profit. So that it's just 0 0.8 times what they've earned in profit. So then to find X over Y, I'm going to move Y to this side and I'm going to move the 0 0.18 to that side. So I get 0 0.32 over 0 0.18 equals x over y. And so 0 0.32 divide 0 0.18, I put that on my calculator, I'm going to round it to two decimal places, it's 1.78. So their annual earnings per share is $1.78. So in other words, for every one share that's in the company, they are earning $1.78. So there'll be a similar calculation in the questions you do. So the price to earnings ratio then, now it becomes easy. So the price to earnings ratio is the market price per share divided by the annual earnings per share. So that just equals 3.82. So what that means is that investor has to pay $3.82 per share for every one dollar the company is earning. So the 3.82 probably doesn't mean a lot on its own, but what you can do is you can compare that to the P to E ratio of other companies, and a lower number is better. So if there was another company and its P to E ratio was two, that means that it is a better investment than this company here. So just follow this process when you get the difficult questions like this. We only had to do all of this business here because we didn't know the annual earnings per share. We didn't even know the annual earnings or the number of shares, but we were able to infer it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.